Hi, and welcome to the Money Magpie webinar on how to save money on your heating and in the home generally. We'll talk about all sorts of ways. We've set up this webinar to address the increase in the cost of living that we're facing and are likely to face for a few months to come. And also to come up with ways that we can all cut costs and have a good standard of living on less, particularly when it comes to our energy bills. And I'm thrilled to be able to introduce you to my two experts who are joining us tonight. We have Tashima Jackson, known as Tash. Um, give us a wave, Tash. Um, from the comparison site Energy Helpline and Nick Hill from Money Helper. Give us a, a wave, Nick, which is run by the Money and Pension Service. Um, in other words, it's a government site, all sorts of elements of money on it. It's what used to be the um, Money Advice Service, Money and Pension Service, all that. Now, we've also got Izzy, Isabel Lawrence from Money Magpie. Give us another wave, Izzy. And uh, she's got some helpful things to say, and she'll be letting me know when someone has a question as well. So that's that's the main reason. Uh, well, no, that's one of the, the reasons why she's here. So um, you can, if, if you can't get my attention, get Izzy's. This webinar is open to everyone to ask any questions they like. I've muted most people, so you'll need to unmute yourself first or put something in the chat box, no problem. No question is too dumb. We can't give any financial advice, of course, because we're not regulated for that. We're not giving advice, but we can give lots of tips, ideas, and factual information. No problem. Um, and I'm just going to keep <laughs> oh, Deborah, you're I'm not able to. Oh, the. Deborah, hello there. Can you can you mute yourself for a moment? That would be great. Thank you. Um, so uh, just put up your hand if you've got a question or put something in the chat box, as I say. We'll have a go at answering everything. But as I say, we're not financial advisors, so don't take any of this as financial advice. And I'm going to get the ball rolling by asking a few questions of my own. And Tash, I'm going to start with you because number one question this is for me. A lot of people like me are finding that their energy provider has gone under. Uh, this is actually the second energy provider I've been with this year that's gone under. So <laughs> I'm, I'm uh, becoming an old hand. Some bad luck. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Talk me through the process of that. What can we expect to happen when one of our, you know, the company that's providing us energy just goes Pfft. Um, so the important thing to remember is that your lights are still going to come on and your heating is still going to turn on. That's the most important thing. And that's the part that people worry about. Mm -hmm. The most important thing to do is to grab a meter reading straight away. As soon as you hear news that your energy provider has gone bust, grab a meter reading and grab your last bill or, or take a screenshot of it if you're getting emails. Um, don't cancel any direct debits. Don't be tempted to look about switching or anything like that. Um, your, your energy supply will continue to run and any credit that you've built up with your supplier is protected. If you are in debt with your supplier, you still have that, you still will need to get that covered. But the important thing is that you will be appointed a new supplier. Your energy supply will still continue. And, and it's just about sitting tight. That's the most important thing. Right. So sit tight. Don't do do anything precipitous. But I'm guessing that the price will go up by some amount because the, the whole point of being with one of those other smaller companies was that they gave really good deals, which was why I was with them, frankly. Um, and, and now it's likely I, I'm I'm guessing that it'll go up. Do you know roughly how much it'll go up by or is it anybody's guess? It's really difficult to kind of predict what it will go up by. I think what is likely to happen is your new supplier, you will go on to their standard variable tariff. And actually, um, in these unprecedented times, that's probably the best tariff for you to be on. So um, whilst it feels, you know, nerve wracking and you, and you kind of feel like you're, you're being left out in the open, actually Ofgem have put these kind of processes in place to protect you, manage the move from one supplier to another. So there's nothing for you to do. OK, that's good. Yeah. And so once you're there, can you then call that new supplier and go, OK, I'm on a standard variable, but have you got anything better? 
they might have a better tariff perhaps do you think mm, uh the standard variable at the moment is probably the best place to be right. you can absolutely call your provider and find out if there is something better the likelihood is that the tariff that you are automatically put on unlike any time that we've ever experienced is, is probably the best place to be for now and it is uh, you know in in a market that i am so used to saying to people switch 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 yeah. i'm not saying that at the moment i'm saying sit tight and just just bear with the market allow it, all that turbulence to come to an end yeah that's that's what i've been saying because i i do think that the turbulence is going to to dampen down it's i don't know when could be months could be weeks i i, I really don't know but it i probably months to be honest yeah. but i i think it's it's gonna gonna go down because it's it's a cyclical market isn't it i mean it was it last year they couldn't give gas away it was so cheap so incredibly cheap they couldn't give it away um yeah and if we think about you know if you've ever been on a plane journey what turbulence feels like in the moment it you know it feels unnerving but you do come out the other end and you know into sun or sunny or warmer climates and, and i think we just have to think about this current state of flux being exactly like that yeah. And, you know, on that subject, Nick, there's been a, quite a lot of panic around, let's be honest, fueled by the media. I am embarrassed to say, really, again, in fact, you know, that's why I set up this webinar, because I've had calls and texts from friends saying they didn't know if they could be able, be able to feed their family, you know. So what help do you have? What ideas do you have for people who are feeling, frankly, a bit panicky at the moment? Well, as Tashmina rightfully says, this is not a time to panic. The, it is, the headlines are alarming, but these uh, price changes are, mean very different things for very different people, and it can be extremely stressful. So for the average person moving a standard variable tariff could be seeing just from the price cap increase, an increased bill of £139 or £153 if you're on a payment, payment tariff. And if you're on a tight budget, that can make up all the difference. So uh, thankfully, the price cap is there helping to mitigate some of that uh, impact of what it could be, because mm -hmm. the fixed deals which are out there, you could be paying hundreds of pounds more, and in some cases, three or four hundred pounds more per, uh, per year. So in terms of things you can do, first thing I'd say, if you're struggling with the bill, get in touch with your current NG provider. They are obliged to try and work with you if necessary to come up with a, a prepayment pre plan. Um, they'll also be able to help signpost you to any uh, grants or any charitable organizations which might be able to help your uh, situation. And if you're in, um, in a vulnerable situation, there is extra uh, help and support available. Um, and if you're not sure where to Citizens Advice and Advice Direct Scotland have extra units to help with this specific situation. So you can call the extra help unit at Citizens Advice and they'll help um, help you through the situation. <laughs> But there are benefits uh, that are, uh, are available. Um, so some of the big ones, which many of you might already know, you've got the winter fuel payment, which mm -hmm. can be up to £300 uh, for those born before 26th of September 1955. And for that one, uh, you shouldn't need to claim. This would, should come through your uh, normal benefits. You've got the warm home discount, which can give you an additional £140 uh, off your electricity bill each year. Um, you, you should be getting it if you're getting the guaranteed credit element or pension credit, um, and you should be getting a letter between now and December uh, to that effect. But it's possible you might be able to, uh, if you're on, say, universal credit or you're on a low income, you might also be able to get the warm home discount. But it's worth getting in touch with your supplier because this is on a limited basis only. Um, firms uh, do offer these schemes, but they do run out. It's a first come, first serve basis if you're uh, trying to get it from a low income perspective. And then, of course, you've got the cold weather payment, and that's very much dependent dependent on whether there's uh, any seven days of freezing in your postcode area um, and this is worth uh, £25 per week uh, that when that occurs um, but ultimately if you're having sleepless nights about money if you're at the till and you're worried whether you're going to be able to keep up with your, with your payments it's early signs that you're getting into debt and you should seek free debt help and you can do that through the money helper free debt advice locator tool. 
Oh, that's it. okay. So now you, you've given us a lot of information really fast Sorry. there, Nick. So <laughs> let can we go through it again a little bit slower. So, so because you've you've thrown I don't know lots of lovely places to go. So you were saying, uh, I mean, let let's talk for example about the. Um, you were saying if if you're vulnerable, you've got you no know, cold weather payments. Can you go through those again? What what is yeah. there there? So Sin and Advice have an extra help unit, which can help people who are in a vulnerable situation, in particular with their energy. So you can get in touch with them and they're going to help support you. But the first action always is if you're struggling with the bill, get in touch with your energy provider. They're going to really want to try and help. They're obliged to help and support you through your situation and work. So actually them. ring them up or, or email them and say, I'm having problems. What email, can you WhatsApp, whatever mechanism yeah. is going to work for you. Absolutely. What, what could they do if you call them up? Well, it's possible if you're on a low income and you're on uh, or uh, you're on universal credit, it might be that you're, that you're eligible for their warm home discount. Um, but for the schemes with the firms, they will have a limited number of warm home discounts they can give away. Um, uh, but that doesn't apply if you're on pension credit. OK, so if you're on pension credit, there's there's other stuff that you can get. If you're on guarantee credit uh, element of pension credit, then the, uh, you will get warm home discount um, and it's not limited. But if you're trying to apply based on um, your low income or that you're getting existing benefits, then there is a limited list uh, amount available. So get in touch with your firm as soon as possible. But obviously with firms going bust, that can be quite a stressful concept. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, that, that's the problem. You think, who can I get in touch with? And of course, with a lot of these things, you, you get on the phone and nobody's answering, you know, or you're there for hours, literally, um, before somebody answers, which makes it difficult. But um, it's good to hear that there, there are other possibilities. I mean, one thing that I often say to people is to go to turntous.org.uk or indeed entitled to. So mm -hmm. both of those have really handy um, benefits calculators. You might find there are benefits that you, you're you um, entitled to you didn't know about. But also um, Turn To Us has, has lovely free money offers. It's got, it's got these grants. So there are all sorts of grants that you can get free money, you know, for, could be all sorts, you know, if you're vegetarian or you happen to live in North Wales or you're a hairdresser, I mean, all sorts of these grant making bodies. Um, and is, you, you mentioned a tool on, on, your, on Money Helper. Did you say that's for free debt advice, Nick? Yeah, so if you, uh, if, you think you're getting yourself into debt. One of the things we know with people with debt, they typically struggle for over a year before they go and get help. Yeah. And we know it has a big impact getting that help sooner rather than later. So some of the early indicators of getting into debt would be sleepless nights about money. Um, you're at the, stood at the till and you're worried whether there's going to be enough money in your wallet or in your card mm -hmm. to pay for it. So if those type of things are starting to happen to you, it might, or if you're not opening up those uh, those uh, bills anymore from them and just tucking them in a drawer, it might be time to get free debt help. And it is free. Um, and the debt advice locator tool will help you find either local or national support. Yes. So, Tash, I'm going to go back to you because am I right in thinking, you know, we, we've talked, as you said, about the, the fact that it's a turbulent time at the moment, but am I right in thinking that these energy price hikes are cyclical? You know, like I said, uh, you know, there wasn't there was a time not long ago when you couldn't give gas away. And it seems to me that, OK, things are a bit different at the moment, but there will come a time when these prices just go back again and we'll kind of half forget about it. What do you think? Do you, do you think that's possible? I, I think it's definitely possible. As you described it, it definitely is cyclical. Um, I think the, the difficulty is that for a short period of time, there's a lot of uncertainty. These are relatively unprecedented times. We, we don't, you know, there's, there's kind of uncertainty, but what is certain is that it, you know, th things will get better and they will change. And I think the important thing is, for people to understand what steps they can take now to make things less uncomfortable, less painful and, and have a little bit of certainty. So try and save money where they can, you know, with with their energy or, or other bills. Yeah, absolutely. And, and you know, let's let's get by the way, if, if anybody's got a really, really good ideas that they want to let, tell us about um, your ways that you are saving money at home, ways that you're saving money on your energy, do put your hand up. Um, and that's that's any of you, Dorian, Annie, Doris, who else can I see, Muriel, 
Fazia, um, Beryl. Oh, Beryl, hello, Beryl. Haven't seen you there. Um, any of you, if you're, if you have any great ideas that, that you're doing to tell us how you're saving money on your heating, always very interested to hear because I've learned bits and pieces along along the way from all sorts of people who've had really great ideas, uh, great ways of saving money on their heating. Um, so Nick, give us a few a few tips that you have. I'll, I'll get some from you and from Tash and also from Izzy. Izzy's, um, as I say, she's one of our money magpies and she's got some good ways of saving money. So uh, Nick, give us a few good ways, practical tips that we can save money in the home and stay warm because that seems to be, you know, the, the, the thing that we need to do now, just at the moment? Well, my top tip, first top tip, would be to go and check your EPC certificate for your home. What's that? What's an EPC certificate? It's an energy performance certificate. So it's, uh, it's something which has been created by an independent body. They've looked at your home and gone, these are the types of things you could do to improve your home efficiency, i.e. reduce your usage. And um, this is the type of cost it would be to implement those changes. And this is the type of saving you would expect after doing that. And so it's a really good kind of cheat sheet in terms of a place to start. Now, well, where you know can that you get it, Mick? Nick, where, where can I find my EPC certificate? So go to gov.uk um, oh. and uh, you can uh, uh, access for free. Again, and I'm, I'm only talking about free stuff. Good, good. <laughs> uh, you can, um, if it, well, if your home was sold after a certain date, then uh, all those homes are obliged to sell their home with an EPC certificate and they're loaded up online and you can just access it. Uh, you just put in your relevant house details, which is fantastic. Mm -hmm. um, so that's a, a good place to get started. Um, then you've got some of the bread and butter ones, such as paying by direct debit, paperless billing. But some of the more unusual ones are getting in touch with the energy provider or checking on their website, whether they're or annual local council, if they've got any schemes which can help save your energy. So one of the ones I quite liked was my energy provider uh, gave me the option of uh, them sending me a free bag which goes in your system, which uh -huh. reduces the amount of water toilet the uh, amount of water used when you flush the toilet yeah. and it's, it, it's the small little things but it's free and it didn't uh, really take much effort um, and then they uh, obviously had a range of different products which I could just get for free basically such as a more energy efficient shower head so it's just working looking at those different ways which you can um, reduce your energy bill without actually incurring a huge upfront cost which is pretty scary yeah. sometimes well, absolutely. I mean, when it comes to insulation and we keep hearing about insulation, you know, that it's a great idea. But yeah, it's a, it's an upfront cost, as you say. So your your energy provider and your local council might have some free stuff that they could send you. Absolutely. And just to give you a feel, uh, if you're in a, um, a detached house and you've got no loft insulation, if you put 30 uh, centimetres of loft insulation in, that could be a 25% reduction in terms of your uh, heating bill. And potentially for DIY and HAP, you might be able to even do it yourself. Uh, but if not, then you can search around and find something to install it. I remember growing up, my, my dad used to send me, when I was very little, he sent me into the, into the eaves with, with this um, horrible, it was sort of pink spongy stuff and it was it had the fiberglass that oh, was yeah. it fiberglass god talk about you know child exploitation because I, i'm picking this bits of nasty fiberglass out of my hands afterwards so yeah if you've got a small child send it into the eaves with with um all, all the We're not suggesting that. <laughs> <laughs> tash what ideas have you got um actual practical ideas that we can use to to make the place warmer on less uh, there are some really simple things. Uh, the ones that Nick mentioned are, are fantastic, but uh, for someone like me who is really bad at DIY and has to try and rope my dad in, yeah. um, things like draft proofing where you can, so around the windows and doors, um, what you can do there. Also, if you've got appliances like a dishwasher, making sure that you're only running lows when you've got a full load. Same with the washing machine, yeah. tumble dryer. Is it really necessary to run that? Um, yeah. These are all things that are going to minimise your energy usage and subsequently your bill. Absolutely. One thing that I like to do is I've, I've got this um, foil. You can do you can use ordinary tin foil, but there's also special stuff you can get from Wix or Wilco or whatever. Um, and it's just foil, the strips of foil that you put behind the radiators and it pushes the heat back in rather than allowing it to go through the wall. Um, yeah. 
and you know it costs you know very little a couple of quid frankly um and you just sort of cut it out stick it there and and bob's your uncle really um and so i've been doing that and also another thing i say to people is is get your boiler fixed get your pipes fixed now ideally actually in the summer really that's when it's cheapest because you know you know what it's like you know it'll be christmas suddenly the boiler goes because it's been a bit dicky for a while um, and, you know, it costs you twice the price because everybody's boiler goes at Christmas or in the middle of, of in the middle of, of snow when you've got, you know, freezing snow and everything and, and you can't get a, a plumber for love no money. So if you do it before that happens, it's usually quite a lot cheaper because the plumbers are cheaper, basically. Izzy, Izzy, I'm going to bring you in here um, yeah. because I know you've been, been um, thinking about this. What, what ideas do you have, practical ideas for everybody to save money on their heating particularly? So similar to what Nick and Tash were saying, just things like, um, you know, insulating. It is an upfront cost, but it, it can save you a lot of money in a year. So for example, you know, insulating your loft can save you £145 a year. Uh, insulating your walls 110 pounds so yes it is an upfront cost but you know over the years it will pay itself off um, from the amount you save on your bills um, and even just little things you know investing in good socks good jumpers yes. uh, hot water bottles uh, mm -hmm. one of my favorite uh, purchases I've ever made is a heated blanket oh, um, yes. that saves a lot of money especially if you've got an electric heater they cost a lot to run yeah. so electric blankets are a great thing and you can put them on a timer mm -hmm. so they'll turn off um and if they get to a certain temperature they'll turn themselves off so you don't need to worry about um them catching a light like you used to back with the old the old <laughs> ones um and things like uh heated airers for your oh. laundry yes um you know if you want to turn your uh, I... down in your home um but you still want to dry your laundry heated areas are a great way they're much much cheaper and um, they only cost pennies every day uh, to, to keep on things yeah. like that so lots of little things and like you've been saying you know blocking drafts um wrapping your radiators you can get insulation tape for any gaps you have in doorways uh even just stuffing a towel if you've got you know a gap in your door putting a towel there heavy curtains you can go to the charity shops get curtains just to pop across so they don't have to cost an arm and a leg um things like that and like you said jasmine uh replacing old boilers it can save you up to 230 pound a year to replace an old boiler so it is definitely an investment and i think a lot of these things are investments so yes they may cost a little bit but over the years you know you'll be grateful because you'll be saving lots of money yeah. Um, so yeah just little things like that um Fantastic. can help you Oh, thanks. And, and Izzy's only recently um, graduated. So, you know, she knows what it's like to be a student. So you, you've picked up some of these, I think, as a student, haven't you, Izzy? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and Nick, um, now someone who won't be named has said on TV that people will have to decide between heating and eating. Well, I disagree, but, you know, it is time to make things a bit cheaper. Do you have any ideas for people to cut their food bills and their home, you know, bills at home, um, not just heating, anything else there? Uh, I could give an endless list. I'll give you oh, some. Sure. Of my, I, I, could, <laughs> I love all these things. So I'll, I'll give you some of my favourites. Um, so one quite good thing if you're part of a family or even if you're not, um, trying to buy the cheaper version of something, you know, this, the same Beach Valley version, but actually doing a taste test either with friends or family and seeing if they can tell the difference um, yes. just to see which one is actually preferred and if it turns out you prefer the cheaper one stick with it if you don't okay maybe you want to try and find the money for the uh, the more expensive variant but uh, when we get blind tested because marketing is very powerful and these firms are advertising because they want to put their hands in your pocket so mm -hmm. finding anything which kind of protects you from yourself in terms of that temptation we're, we're all guilty of it um, one of my favorite one another one of my favorite ones coming up to christmas is secret mm -hmm. santa Oh so, yes. I don't know about you guys, but I'm, I spent years buying fairly silly gifts to my uh, family, of which probably either got went to a charity shop or they threw it away or used it for five minutes, stuck in a cupboard. Yeah. So what we agreed with each other was we'd only buy one really good present for um, one person and family each. Um, and so you can give up, spend a bit more, get something which is more significant to them, but overall spend less. And that's made a huge difference to the budget. And that then starts to veer you away from, you don't necessarily have to spend a lot to have a really good Christmas, in which yes. case you might start only getting presents for kids and just forget the adult bit. 
Um, but I, I could go on for a while. <laughs> what type <laughs> of ones would you like? Well, that's <laughs> a very good point. Yeah. Like? <laughs> I think I, I'd like to throw, actually what I might do is throw it out to, to the, uh, the audience here. Beryl, I bet you've got some good ideas. And um, and Annie, I, I know you have. You usually have some. Re oh, if, if she's there, actually, maybe she's not there now. Um, but Beryl, have you got it? If you unmute yourself, because I bet you've got some good ideas, haven't you? Can you unmute yourself? Oh yes, yeah, there you I've are. I've done that. Okay. Again, really, I guess really what most people have been saying, and that is sort of like you know, especially with these increased bills, etc. The thing is to sort of like layers, okay, mm -hmm. you know, put layers on rather yeah. than perhaps maybe say one one jumper, etc. Mm. Uh, and then obviously, if you get a bit hot, then you then you then you can just sort of like take them off, I guess. Really, yeah. yeah. But uh, I, again, as somebody who lives on my own, mm. uh, again, what I try to do is uh, not overbuy on food. Yeah. Uh, so if I go to the supermarket. Maybe, um, you know, they don't all do it, of course, but uh, just maybe, say, pick up a couple of vegetables or, say, carrots, a couple of potatoes and things like that. Uh, so you're not wasting at the end of the day and you can go and replenish it whenever you need to do. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, because I, I've been terrible because I like you, I live on my own and I, I'm a shocker for these sort of, you know, bulk buy things. And I think, oh, that's a good value. And I have to get it home and think, I'm going to have to eat this for the whole of the rest of the week. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> so, um, yeah, you 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 learn you just learn to adjust, I mm. guess, really. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, another thing that I'm um, finding, I'm I like vegetarian meals. I'm not completely veg. I'm I'm quite a pescatarian, really, and occasionally some meat. But it is cheaper. You know, you can you can have really good veggies like, you know, asparagus, cool things like asparagus, and it's still cheaper. Than, than meat so yes. oh um, absolutely yeah, yeah the odd veggie meal is quite a good idea isn't it and and again <laughs> try uh, i know it's not always easy for people but try and stay away from those uh, ready-made meals even if they are vegetarian because they just cost a fortune and the money just sort of runs away with them really so yes. yeah buy fresh and make it yourself because it's you know it's it's part of the fun yeah, yes, exactly. Anyone else? Stuart, have you got any good ideas for, for everybody? Um, well, I think sometimes if you look at look at it in sensibly and go into perhaps spend some time in the evening in a smaller room, maybe the kitchen or something like that, or, you know, where the cooker generates a bit of heat, that sort of thing. Yeah. Um, and like everyone else, you just put jumpers on and everything and keep yourself warm yeah. um, and perhaps get in the habit of putting it on at a certain time, maybe. Um, and the challenge there is you might only have it on an hour or an hour and a half while you have your shower and everything. Yes. And then turn it off and get your hot water bottle, that sort of thing. So just try and economise in your own home, really. Yeah. Um, Exactly. Yeah, I think that, that's a very good point, Stuart. And, and are these things that you've tried? These are things that I've tried because with my uh, gas, I have to use a pre-meter um, card. I have to put it in. Yeah. Uh, it's a bit complicated, but the wiring, they can't put a smart meter in. Um, so from my point of view, I can control it a little bit, but obviously it's more expensive with a card actually um so i've had to because i live on my own as well so i have to look at different ways of doing it um and i think yeah the thick layers the jumpers get a favorite room maybe the kitchen mm -hmm. and try and generate heat from the cook and things like that i know it seems we're going back to those sort of times but at the moment that's the way it is isn't it let's Absolutely. be honest yeah that is the way it is and I was just thinking that as you were speaking yeah. I was thinking you know yeah. that's that's the age-old idea and hey it yeah. worked it, it worked then didn't it yeah. and then we get through it but I think just challenging yourself to only have it on at a certain time yes that's what I've been doing and that is working so I might not put it on until half eight it might be cold but you just have to jog around and keep yourself warm keep yourself busy exactly. um it's yeah. Really good. Oh, excellent. Uh, That's really good, Stuart. Sorry, do you have another idea? 
Uh, no, that was it. Just say hello. You probably remember me when I came on in the old days. Yeah, absolutely. I do. Yes, yeah. that's what I thought. Oh, I know Beryl. I know Stuart. <laughs> I'm yeah. going to call you. <laughs> hello. <laughs> in fact, Stuart, what you've said reminds me, um, and I was going to ask yeah. Tash, Tash, yeah. are smart meters a help? Do you, do you think that they're good? Could we be using them better? Because I've got one and um, it's all right, but you know there may be things that I'm not using that about it that, that I could be using. Is, is is there anything you would suggest with smart meters? I think they're great for awareness. Sometimes we're not even aware that we're using energy. So one of the tips uh, to go back to your last question are things like turning off your TV from the plug and the computer and stuff from the plug in the evening when you go to bed because whilst they're on they you know they're using energy so they are good in that sense because you know if you think about when you're out of the house how much energy is being utilized in the home and so in that respect it, they're good for awareness which i think therefore makes you manage your energy usage in the home a little bit better yeah absolutely are, are there any tips you've got tash for um saving money on on heating anything that you particularly do that you think is uh, really rather handy um, so I, I think we've shared some fantastic ideas for energy saving or saving money on your energy bills. I think one of the things that I do is look at other costs and where I can save money on those. So, for example, my broadband provider, those guys are still begging for custom. So give them a call and say, am I on the best deal? Yeah. Is there a better deal that I can be on there? Subscriptions gym subscriptions that I said that I would go to the gym and absolutely haven't get that cancelled <laughs> um Experian or you know any of those types of companies subscriptions that we signed up to with good faith that we're not using just yeah. make sure that you're not still paying a monthly a monthly cost on those it's it's a really good time to kind of almost do an MOT of all your outgoings and just kind of check through see where there is money that can be saved because whilst the there isn't money necessarily to be saved with energy you know directly through the bills at the moment mm. some of the other industries there absolutely is a very good point yeah absolutely ah oh, we've got a, a question here i think um black friday oh now so this is from kerry uh black friday is a great time to switch providers such as mobile phone contracts etc very good point absolutely yeah. Yeah, I, I couldn't agree with it more. Um, the only thing to be aware of at, at Black Friday or, or any time like that is, did I intend on spending money during this time? Is it a cost that I was actually going to, to kind of um, foot or is it just an added luxury? Because we just want to make sure that we're saving money, not spending extra because we, we're all you know, at risk of like splurging during Black yeah. Friday. But it's just to make sure that it's, something that you've been thinking about purchasing and that you're getting a good deal on and not just like yeah. another TV that you might not necessarily need. So as, as Kerry says, it's a good time to to switch providers. So like what? So I'm guessing, Kerry, I don't know, you know, uh, unmute yourself, tell us, but I'm assuming you go on to some comparison sites, see what the deals are and then go on, have a look at the special Black Friday version, see if they're even cheaper. And, and you generally find that they are, I'm guessing. Uh, yeah, that's normally what I do. Um, I always try and get my deals for around Black Friday. Obviously, I know not everyone can do that because if you're already in a contract, you have to wait until your exit date to leave. Good point. Uh, but I've kind of done it so my contracts always end around that time now. Uh, obviously, yeah. like I said, not everyone can do that. But yeah, it just kind of seems to save money. I've just actually locked in mm -hmm. a two-year phone deal for £10 a month for unlimited oh. everything. Wow. Mm -hmm. That's free. Really Who's that with? We're free, the phone provider. So that was an amazing deal. Um, I would just probably say my best tip is I sign up for a lot of newsletters. So I found that through Hot Deals UK. Yeah. Um, deal, just you kind of have to go for it straight away, which obviously not everyone can do. But if you have mobile phone mm -hmm. email alerts, then you can kind of get on it and jump on it. So now I'm paying £10 a month for the next two years. That's so brilliant. I can't That's really brilliant. argue with that. <laughs> So, so you got that through Hot Deals UK? That's correct, yeah, yeah, yeah. 
So that's good to know. So I'm guessing, Carrie, that you're on our newsletters. Are you? Are you on? The I am. I am, and that's why. Yeah, I saw this, and I was like, I would really like to hear about it because I've actually just changed energy provider uh, this week. Oh, so well done. I find for myself, and maybe I don't know if other people on on the Zoom also find this. I'm actually in a building in a flat that's a prepay meter, absolute nightmare. And yeah. a lot of the advice is for people that are on direct debits, which is no good to me. And okay. a lot of the stuff out there is just, we're always, always being penalized all the time. Yeah. Um, you know, so it's a shame really. It is, it is, isn't it? Nick, have you got any thoughts on that particularly? Because this is what Stuart was saying as well. You know, if, so if you're on a prepaid, you, you do tend to get penalized. So do, have you got any ideas for, for people on prepaid meters, Nick? First of all, uh, Kerry, we, we've actually got some specific stuff on prepayment meters on the Money Help website. So if you want to check out anything after, just go there and you'll find the information. Uh, just because you're on a prepayment meter doesn't mean you can't switch. You still potentially can switch. Yeah, although good. it falls within the caveats, which we've been discussing with switching in general right now. And yeah. everyone's struggling right now. And it doesn't make sense for most people. But uh, if we, historically, you can still switch. And even if you're in, in debt to your prepayment provider up to uh, 500 pounds, you can still uh, sw uh, switch. So um, it's important. Uh, then there's always the option of trying to get switched to a standard meter rather than a prepayment meter, which then opens up the whole market to you. But um, as uh, Kerry was saying, it is, is tricky uh, and it is more expensive being on a prepayment meter. But can I mention a few things on Black Friday? Yeah, do, absolutely. If you've got some good, good Black Friday tips, always like to hear those. <laughs> it sounds like Kerry's uh, found a way to try and cut through for her to find the good deals. But um, as Tashmina uh, was rightfully saying, it's, it's really about only buying the things which you actually needed. And a lot of the data has kind of shown that some things are even more expensive on Black Friday than the, and they kind of price it high to then sell it low. Um, I've worked for commercial companies far, and they've literally got an Excel sheet going, this item will mostly sell on the discounted rate. So it's really important to understand the, the, the situation. And um, so if you are, if there is something you need to, in advance, you can use something like Camel Camel, which is an Amazon site, which allows you to see the history of a price of an item over time. So that allows you to see if it really is a discount price. And it also allows you to set up alerts. So when the, your item you're looking for reaches the price point you're willing to pay, you'll get an alert and then you can buy it. But to be honest, nine times out of 10, by the time I get the alert, I've gone, well, it wasn't that important anyway. And I've not gone on to buy it and I've saved myself the money. So it serves <laughs> two purposes. One, to stop me buying in the first place. And two, not to help me avoid those kind of, those tricks of the marketing sale. Because ultimately, Black Friday is about selling you things, getting the money from your pocket to uh, to the to the seller. And so I really urge caution over uh, Black Friday. It is worth looking at when things are cheaper. Yeah, sounds like Kerry's done really well there. I mean, because it, it, it's one thing to buy things, but it, it's a whole other thing to to switch services. So it's I mean, Kerry managing to get ten pounds a month for unlimited everything. That's really good, you know, and and. So uh, it sounds like Kerry, you're one of the Black Friday winners <laughs> there, because yeah. I agree. Yeah. Some of them are actually. And another thing, Nick, do you do you um, do anything about um, oil fired um, heating and everything? Because um, on Money Magpie, we do have a there's, there's a group of people. Occasionally, we get emails from people going, "We're on oil fired heating," you know. And so the the oil price affects you, but the gas price doesn't. Do you have any thoughts on oil fired heating, Nick? Um, I forget the Pacific government announcement, but wasn't it announced that all fired heating is being phased out and there's a specific date to it? And so it might not be quite uh, quite as relevant, if that makes sense. Yeah, so right. Worth checking out what the mm -hmm. future is going to hold for you and what kind of heating system makes sense, because ultimately it'll probably push you down the route of considering, am I going to be connected to the mains or am I? do I consider an alternative fuel system, whether that be ground source heat pump or air source heat pump, of which we know those are really expensive to get right now mm -hmm. and the payoff is quite a long time so uh it's important to do your research and work out what is actually going to make sense for you both now in terms of your budget and in the, in the longer term yeah tash do you, does energy helpline cover alternative forms of heating like you know oil or as we we're talking about heat pumps that kind of thing 
We tend to stick to the standard household gas and electricity energy helpline, but mm. we've got loads of guides on the website to help people out. So absolutely would recommend that people go onto our website and the websites that Nick's mentioned. Um, now, Doris has just said, when is Black Friday? It's the day after Thanksgiving. Um, and of course, November. we don't really bother with Thanksgiving too. I think is that it's Friday, is it the 27th of, of, it's November, it's the end of November. Yeah, the last um, Friday in November. But actually, what they, what they now do is, it's that whole weekend. So the Monday after what is traditionally Black Friday, is also is actually probably a bigger day bigger discounts and more exciting um cyber monday i think it's now called cyber which monday. means that online loads of great online deals again for things that you need yeah things that you need as you say so um i'm just looking it up so it's 20 friday the 26th um is uh, the last Friday. Um, so it'll be Cyber Monday will be Monday the 29th of November. And also, you know, it, it's it's like Christmas now. It, it's it's like two weeks because it's yeah. supposed to be the Friday, but you know, about a week before it's like, oh, we've got Black Friday deals, you know, you can get them now and all that kind of nonsense. So it, it's got to be a really big thing. But, you know, as, as Tash says, as Kerry says, as Nick says, if it's something that you know how much it would normally be, it's something you know you need and you would be buying it anyway, then it's worth having a look um, for Black Friday. But otherwise, keep away, keep away, because you never know what you're going to be hooked into buying. That, that's certainly the way I think of it. You know, if I haven't got the money, I don't go in the shop or I don't go on the website because th that's to me is the best way of saving money. Just just don't even look at it. <laughs> I, Sorry, I, what did you say? I said avoidance is yes. better, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. Absolutely. Um, so I've got to, uh, uh, Nick, you, you have been through some of the grants and loans that you can get if you're on a, a really low income. Could you could you remind us again what what there is? Um, because, I mean, we've heard about the warm home scheme, warm home scheme, but some of that's just sort of gone by the wayside, hasn't it? Um, so you've got the winter fuel payment, you've got mm -hmm. the warm home discount, mm -hmm. and then there's the cold weather payment. And this uh, is for people who are vulnerable, is that right? You have to be of a certain age or certain income. So each scheme is uh, slightly different. So mm -hmm. in terms of the winter fuel payment, um, it's a payment, of, a payment of between £100 and uh, £300 for those born be before the 26th of September 1955. Mm -hmm. um, and if you're... Uh, eligible you'll be able to you'll get the payment through your uh, benefits mm -hmm. um, and then in terms of the warm home discount uh, you can get up to 140 pounds off your electricity bills um, if you are already getting the guaranteed credit element of your uh, pension credit you should be getting it and you should get a letter between now and december in terms of your eligibility uh, for it but firms also offer a warm home discount for those on a low income or potentially gain benefits such as universe credit but you have to apply to the firms to right. get them. And there is a limited amount available of those, of those of the warm home discounts that they will offer. And it's on a first come, first serve basis. So when you say firms, you, you mean the, the actual the energy firms? You'll provide the energy firms. Yeah. Yes. So yeah. whoever you're with, if it's Eon or Empower or British Gas, you go, I need help. Um, so they've got money there that they could potentially help you if you, if you qualify. Yeah. So the message is really, if you think you might uh, be eligible for that, get in touch with them sooner rather than later, unless you're already getting it because you're, you're on pension credit. And what about if you've got a family? Of course, you might be on universal credit, but, you know, it, quite often it's this is this is the worry that I, I've had emails from people who are single parents saying, I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to cope. I, I, I don't know if I'm going to be able to heat and eat my, you know, give give food to my children. Um, is there anything extra for for children um apart from those who are on universal credit well uh, if if we're talking children i'd really my starting point would be actually checking uh with your local council if there's any local charities or schemes which are available uh we're getting down to regional uh types of stuff rather than the national schemes which we've just been referring to um there might be charities and organizations which are there to support families during this uh, tricky period. But as you rightly said earlier, if you've not done it before, do do a benefits check, do go and use Entitled to or turn to us, 
both fantastic calculators. And it's just to make sure you're paying, paying taxes so much, you know, so much of your life. Let's make sure you're getting what you're eligible for. <laughs> yes, exactly. And I'm just also thinking about um, petrol, and you know, because this is the other thing that's that's in the in the news. Um, I, uh, you know, I, I'm I'm happy to say that I I've actually got rid of my car because I live in in the centre of a city. But if you need a car, and a lot of people do, particularly if you're in a rural area, it's a really tough time. Um, and Nick or Tash or or Izzy or anybody, what what are your tips for somehow making your car a bit cheaper? Is it is it basically about car sharing now? One of the things that I am really uh, passionate about is just making sure that I'm on the best deal for my insurance and that's a cost that it, you have to pay but don't allow the renewal to come around and just uh, fall onto that as with most things that that's you know loyalty doesn't necessarily pay so it's super important that you jump onto a comparison site you're comparing and making sure that you are getting the best best deal and that might be eliminating some of the things that you're getting elsewhere so a lot of um, insurance policies come with breakdown cover but you might have that for your bank so just make sure that you're not duplicating and paying twice mm. for the same service oh very good point nick any any ideas for saving money with with your car with petrol etc indeed um that that was a fantastic moment from tasmina um, just to build on that, in some uh, some firms offer you the chance to put a little black box in effect in your car and to assess your driving. And so if you know you're a good driver and you obey all the rules, you brake nicely, you accelerate nicely, then maybe a scheme like that might get your belt even cheaper. I know my sister's using it and uh, it saves her a few pounds. Um, and then on, in addition to that, proactive maintenance is critical. As we were talking with the boiler, it's the same for a car. Doing all those checks, there are some basic checks you can do yourself before you go and get an MOT, but so they don't charge you for uh, filling up your kind of um, windscreen washer and things like that. There are some basic checks and simple things every, everyone uh, can do. That kind of information is online. If you're talking pet fuel in, in particular, of which it's tricky to get hold of these days, but there are <laughs> apps which will help you find your local cheapest uh, fuel deal. But I'm, I'm sure on this uh, group, we've got some real savvy people who know just the place to go to to get there. I bet, uh, I bet yeah. we have. I mean, I, I tend to go to the supermarkets. They they tend to, you know, if if you're on the way somewhere, you think, oh, good Tesco or Morrison's, you know, Aldi, and that's real Asda. Asda is my the one my usual go to when I, when I do have a car. Um, but yeah, has anybody got any good ideas um, to help? Annie, have you got anything, or Kerry or Dorian? Um, or Beryl, I don't know if you drive. Dorian, saying yes. Dorian. Dorian, Dorian, do um, unmute yourself and tell us where are you, Dorian? I am here. Can you hear me? <laughs> good, we can hear you. Good, good. Right, I, I just had uh, bought myself a new car. Mm -hmm. Well done, gosh. Hybrid, hybrid. Yes. Very cheap to run, and I had a good deal, and I got it for half price. How did you do that? Because cars are expensive at the moment. Second-hand cars are incredibly expensive at the moment. Well, my new car, it was a Suzuki Swift. Mm -hmm. uh, it was um, 14 grand, uh, and they took two grand off as a promotion. Mm -hmm. And then I had six grand from, from the other car, and then it came down to half price. Oh, that's, that's fantastic. And just, because it's a hybrid, it uses less petrol just it's just really? yeah well that's i i think all those with electric cars right now are feeling pretty smug frankly mm. <laughs> <They're pretty laughs> <pleased with themselves. laughs> which sounds really great so now we've just got a few minutes left um tash is there anything that you'd like to tell us that we haven't asked about so far because i know you know we've got you we've got nick um izzy we've all got great ideas and um, everybody else in the audience, I know there are other people there with some really good ideas for saving money around the house. Tash, have you got anything that you'd, any good tips you'd like to give us before you go? Uh, a couple of things that we've spoken about, things that might have an upfront cost initially, but would in the long run save you some money. So LED light bulbs, there's smart kettles, smart thermostats, energy saving plugs, 
and smart shower heads, which you've spoken a little bit about. But these things are great so that if you know you do have things plugged in, you can turn them off through, through your phone and it means that you can save energy um, mm. that way. And also um, Nick mentioned the one home discount, which is a, a great scheme for people who are worried about their ability to pay energy. It's worth saying that that scheme opens on the 18th of October. Not all energy suppliers are subscribed to that scheme. Um, most of the big ones are, but as Nick said, absolutely speak to your energy provider and find out whether they are included. Yeah, because if you don't ask, you don't get, you know, you might yeah. as well ask. I, I say that with the council as well, because it is a postcode lottery, admittedly, but don't ask, don't get. If you're having problems, having money problems, call the council and you know see if they've got the cash because they, they could easily. Nick, what ideas have you got for us that, uh, that we haven't gone through yet? I think one, number one, if you've not uh, reviewed your budget any time in the past year, it's well worth redoing it. You can use uh, the free budget planner on the Money Helper website, or you can use one of the apps uh, which are available in the market. But the key point is reviewing your outgoings and incomings. And that's when you start to spot things which you didn't actually want to keep spending uh, money on, which Tasmima referred to earlier in terms of checking those direct debits, standing orders, and realizing I'm not really getting value from that service, or I've not switched that a mobile phone deal in a while. I'm going to I'm going to uh, switch that and start putting the money back in my pocket. And then I think my second point would be for anybody who really is struggling to make ends meet, you don't have to do it alone. You can either give us a call, you can chat to us on WhatsApp. Uh, we will help and we will walk through your situation, and see what we can do to help, whether that be help you access benefits or work out what you could do differently. Oh, that's handy. So that's a bit like the the debt charities are doing because. Yeah, I mean, I, you were saying you've got a, a debt charity finder on the site, and I often send people there for help with budgeting. But but you at Money Helper, you're actually doing that yourselves now, are you? Absolutely. So um, if you're getting into debt, getting debt help first is top priority. And we say that on our website as well. We actually fund a, a third of the debt sector. And so we work with them to making sure they're providing. And if you are in that situation and your money's gone out of control and you're getting debt help, they'll also help review your budget. But if you're not quite at that stage and you need, just need that little bit of help, I was speaking to somebody just a, a couple of weeks ago and she had a bit of an impulse control and we were able to talk through a situation and go, okay, let's try doing these uh, few things. So a good one, which I use myself is if I'm buy, shopping online, I'll put it in the chat checkout box but not complete the purchase till the next day and half the time I get to the next day and go mm, actually it doesn't feel so important <laughs> yes exactly that's a good one Izzy yeah. you're with us what, what what ideas have you got for us Izzy that we haven't gone through yet uh just a few little things like you said about petrol going to supermarkets um you know the prices of petrol are significantly more on the motorway because they know that you have to get it so plan ahead if you can go to a supermarket um things about cars um like you said jasmine lift sharing if you can walk um or get a bus instead that's always a good thing um one thing i've started doing in my house is putting the heating on a timer um so for a couple of hours in the morning when i'm getting up and a couple of hours in the evening just as i'm you know having a shower going to bed things like that um and um just turning your heating down by one degree can save you 10% on your yearly bills. So even just doing that and popping a jumper on can just really make the world of difference. I think the, the wool industry is going to do very well this week, this winter, you know, because so many of us are thinking, right, we need better, better jumpers. I need some more, more wool. And uh, so, yeah, so I think they're going to do very well. As you said, um, Izzy, nice, thick, warm socks, warm woolen socks. Great. Has anybody else got any really cool top tips for saving energy, saving money in the home before we say goodbye? Anybody want to put their hands up and tell me their, their exciting new tip? No, <laughs> nothing there. Well, my big tip is getting friendly with your neighbours. I think, you know, it's it's time that we, we got even friendlier with our neighbours, friends, family and, and shared it, share food. I, I, I'm sure you do this, yeah. but I live in a, in a block of flats. And if one of us goes away, um, we, we emptied the fridge to somebody else. You know, I did this the other day um, with, with one of my neighbours. And, hey, you know, there is so, there's so much that you can save by sharing stuff with your neighbours, food, tools, plants, um, babysitting, did a bit of babysitting last night, cleaning, all sorts of stuff. So I think this is, this is a, a really great way that we can um, have more for less. 
Thank you, thank you so much for coming. Um, Nick Hill from Money Helper, moneyhelper.com, and uh, Tashima Tash from energyhelpline.com, and Izzy, Isabel Lawrence from moneymagpie.com. And thank you, all of you, for coming, and thank you for giving us your ideas. Um, Fazia, oh, this is a good one. Um, putting a candle out in the out in the room has stopped <clears throat> has stopped me putting uh, the heating on in the evening. Oh, that's interesting. So putting a candle on in the room has stopped me putting the heating. That's interesting. I saw somebody else did something about uh, putting a candle um, and and having they've got a, an upside down plant pot. So there's some actual there's there's a gap, but the the candle actually heats the plant pot and that convects heater i'm going to try that that sounds really cool but certainly that's a nice idea putting a candle on that's a great tip thank you very much everybody for coming it's been lovely having you we have been recording this and so we will be uploading it onto money magpie and we'll be putting it in the newsletter so make sure you are signed up to our newsletter and also we've got another webinar coming in a few weeks time called help i'm in my 50s with no savings that's being sponsored by pension b so it's another free one so come along to that one we will be promoting that in the newsletter and in social media so that'll be our next free webinar come and do that and have a look at the paid for ones as well, because we've got some rather good investing webinars coming up. Lovely to see you. Thank you very much. And good night. <laughs>